What is up guys, Karma Medic here, and today we're gonna to be covering the verbal reasoning section of the UCAN test. I'm gonna go through a bunch of questions on my computer and answer them live on camera so you guys can see my thought process and what it is that I'm taking into account when answering these questions. If you guys don't know who I am, my name is Nasser. I'm a second year medical student at King's College London, and I make all kinds of interesting videos about medical school life and medical school here on this channel. So feel free to subscribe if you guys wanna follow along. I also have an Instagram that you guys seem to really like, so feel free to follow me on there if you want to get more day-to-day -day updates about what I'm up to. I'm actually getting on a flight to Toronto later today uh, to start doing scientific research in Canada. But you know what? Like, I'm not going to be able to record in this room when I'm in Canada. I'm going to miss it when I'm making videos over there. So I thought I would make another video before I left. So like I said, today we're gonna to be tackling the verbal reasoning questions. If you guys are looking for specific tips for this section, then I would direct you to a video that I made last year. I'll put links to it in the description and somewhere here on screen. That video covers all the different tips and tricks that you'll need to tackle and ace this section. But for today, I'm just gonna go through the questions live on camera, to show you guys what it is that I'm thinking about. And also a big thank you to Medify for partnering with me on this video. Medify is the online UCAT question bank that I've been using for all of my UCAT videos and it's what I would recommend, honestly, if you guys are looking for a question bank to practice these UCAT questions. So if you guys wanna check out Medify, I'll leave links to their website in the description down below. Without further ado, let's jump straight into answering questions live on camera. So verbal reasoning is split into true, false, and can't tell, and reading comprehension. I'm gonna click on this general one here so that I get questions from both sides of the spectrum. So I actually get asked this question quite a lot. People are always asking me, should I read these questions first and then go to the paragraph, or should I go to the paragraph and then go to the questions? I will read the question first and pick out the most important words, okay? The key words, the unique words to that question that will take me to the answer in the paragraph. Then I will scan the paragraph for those words and try and answer that question. While I'm scanning the paragraph to answer that single question, I'm obviously gonna be reading a lot of other things within that paragraph, and those are gonna be memory cues for future questions. So I'll explain as I go along, but basically I'm reading the question first, and then I'm going to the paragraph. Communist Party of China is the governing party of the People's Republic of China. Okay. So now I guess the question becomes, is the, the People's Republic of China the same thing as China? Because it says here, the Communist Party is the governing party of the People's Republic of China, which is here. And it says here, the CPC is the sole governing party of China. Okay, so the rest of the paragraph doesn't seem to talk about that. In these parties, however, hold no real power or independence from the CPC, which is the Communist Party of China. So that's something else. We're going to go with true for this one. The other eight legal parties of China have staged coups against the ruling government. Okay, quick scan for coups. Um... Okay, I did a quick scan. I didn't see anything about coups, so I'm gonna say can't tell. There's no evidence to tell me that it's false. There's no evidence to tell me that it's true, so I'm gonna go with can't tell. CBC governs on the basis of democratic centralism under all circumstances. So that is, before I even look at the questions or whatever, this is a very extreme statement. It's saying under all circumstances, it governs in a democratic fashion. So it's probably gonna be false. I don't know, I'm gonna read the paragraph now. But anytime there's a very extreme statement, unless it is stated in the paragraph as well, as an extreme statement, tends to be false, but let's see. So all it says about this is that it entails democratic and open discussion. So we can't tell if it's uh, democratic centralism under all circumstances. It's organized on the basis of democratic centralism, but we don't know if it's uh, <laughs> if it's acting within democratic centralism at all times. It just says that it's organized on the basis of it. So does it do it on all circumstances? I'm gonna say can't tell. I don't think we can say false either because we don't have any evidence to say that it doesn't act in that circumstance. Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna go with can't tell. For the majority of the time, the Politburo and its standing committee are responsible for most of the party's duties. Okay, let's find that word politburo and standing committee. Okay, here. Most most duties and responsibilities are vested in the politburo and its standing committee. For the majority of the time, um, can we say that that's true? For the majority of the time and most duties and responsibilities. So I, this doesn't really talk about time. The body meets once a year. Most duties and responsibilities are vested in politburo or whatever. So. That is a majority of the responsibility, but it doesn't mean that it's for the majority of the time. So I'm gonna go with can't tell. The chairman of the Central Military Commission is the commander in chief of the People's Liberation Army. All right, let's find People's Liberation Army. Um, I don't recall that anywhere. 
I, I like I can't tell from this paragraph and there's no information to tell me otherwise so I'm gonna go with can't tell I feel like I've chosen one too many can't tells for this but let's see <coughs> okay cool so four out of five I got one of them incorrect so let's see what went on there uh, for the majority of the time oh really let's see uh, the highest body of TPC is the National Congress okay Oh, I didn't even see the sentence. I was in a completely different place. So yeah, that's like, that's one of the disadvantages, I would say about reading the question first, and then skimming through the paragraph to find the information. For example, here, Politburo and the Standing Committee is talked about here, which is where I read about it and where I got my information from. Um, but it's also talked about just up here, the highest body of the thing is blah, blah, blah. Had I read the entire thing to begin with, and sort of tried to remember what was going on, maybe I would have realized that but I think that's probably gonna be a waste of time. And so I'll happily take the loss of one point out of five points on this question and move on with my life. It's better that I get four correct and then five right instead of waste a ton of time on this question and maybe get five out of five right, but then not have enough time for questions down the line. Oh my gosh, this is what we would call a long boy. This is a lot of reading. Let's see what we can do. Which of the following statements is false? Ah, these are the ones that take the longest time because you have to individually evaluate every single one of the answers. Tokyo became the capital of Japan in 1943. What am I gonna skim for? 1943, and that's like pretty much it. That will, that's the most unique part of this sentence here. Tokyo, capital, and Japan are not the most unique aspects of this. They're probably gonna be talked about in many different places in this paragraph but the word 1943 is likely to be unique and only come up once. So that's what I'm gonna quickly scan for. And I find it right here. So let's read the sentence that's involved in Tokyo, administers 23 wards, blah, blah, city, cover a city, emerged and became the metropolitan prefecture in 1943. Does metropolitan prefecture mean um, the capital? I don't know. So <laughs> which of the following is false? Could be this one. So let's move on and evaluate some others. The official name of Tokyo is actually Tokyo Metropolis. So Tokyo, officially Tokyo Metropolis, is the capital of Japan. Okay, so now I know that this one is true, and I now also know that this one is false. The capital of Japan is Tokyo Metropolis, whereas in 1943, Tokyo became merged and became the Metropolitan Prefecture. So now I know for sure that number one is false, number two is true. So now I don't need to evaluate number three and four, and I encourage you guys to do this as well. It's asking for the one false statement. Once you've found the false statement, choose that statement, have confidence and believe in yourself and move on with your life because you are going to be so stressed for time uh, tackling these questions. Once you know you have the right answer, just believe in yourself, have confidence in yourself, click it and move on. So yeah, next question. The Tokyo Metropolitan Government covers the whole of the Metropolitan Prefecture, is responsible for finding the upkeep, oversees 23 special wards, governs 30 municipalities. So there what I've done is just quickly scan through the answers so that I can gain a little bit of an idea of what kinds of things I'm gonna be looking for in the paragraph, and now I'm gonna check them one by one. So whole Metropolitan Prefecture, uh, Metropolis is one of the seven, Tokyo Metropolitan Air Government. So that's what I'm looking for. Tokyo Metropolitan, Tokyo Metropolitan, Tokyo Metropolitan. Let's see a couple of these. So overseas the 23 special wards. 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23. I don't see 23 there. Tokyo Metropolitan Government administers the 23 special wards of Tokyo. Okay. So it could be. Governs 30 municipalities as well. Also administers 39 municipalities. That's false. Okay. So at this point, I'm not a million percent sure of my answer, but I have spent quite a lot of time answering this one question and you shouldn't spend a lot of time answering any one question because all questions are worth the same number of marks. So I'm gonna go with what I think is correct, what is like almost in my mind correct, and I'm gonna move on with my life. You choose the question and you move on. Which of the following statements is false based on the passage? There are more than 37.8 million people living in the metropolitan thing. So the population is over 9 million, total population exceeding 13 million. Prefecture is part of the world's most populous metropolitan area, upwards of 37.8 people, 37.8 million. So there are more than 37.8 million people living in the metropolitan prefecture. The prefecture is part of the world's most populous metropolitan area. Hmm. I don't know if we can know that for sure. The city has the second highest number of Fortune 500 countries. Blah, blah, blah. The city has the second highest number of Fortune 500 companies in any city in the world. Okay, let's find Fortune 500 really quick. Come on. I don't see Fortune 500 anywhere. Ah, oh, here. City hosts 51 of the Fortune 500 companies, the highest number of any city in the world. City has the second highest number, so that's false. So it says the city hosts 
51 Fortune 500 companies, which is the highest number of any city in the world. Here it says that the city has the second highest number of Fortune 500 companies. So that one statement is false. Also in these questions, um, I find it easiest to quickly look at the answer responses that have numbers or dates or things like that, because those are quick and easy to find within the paragraph where something like this, Tokyo's home to the Tokyo Broadcasting System, is just words, and there's a lot of words here, so it's gonna be more difficult to find those ones first. So generally, I gravitate towards the number-related answers when I'm quickly trying to scan through the paragraph for those words. Um, so yeah, you don't have to do these in order, obviously. A, true or false, B, true or false. You can choose whatever order you want. So choose the ones that you know you're gonna be able to find the fastest. So yeah, you can go for B with that one. It can be inferred from the passage that. Okay, so this is an important concept. Um, inferring means that you're going to make an assumption in order to reach this conclusion. It's not going to be specifically stated in the paragraph. It's not going to be specifically denied. It's something that you can infer. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. It's You need to make an assumption in order to reach this conclusion. So tourists generally have a positive experience in Tokyo. Tokyo ranked first in blah, 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 and fourth and blah, blah. The city is considered an alpha plus world city. It was ranked first in best overall experience, category, trip, advisor, blah, 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 health, nightlife, shopping, local public transportation, and cleanliness of the streets. I'm going to go with this one. You know, there's a lot of positive things here that I think a tourist would be interested in. Helpfulness of locals. That's a very touristy thing. Nightlife, shopping, transportation, whatever. So yeah, I'm going to be with, I'm going to go with this. Then I'm going to quickly read these. Cost of living is low. Generally from this paragraph, you get the vibe that cost of living is definitely not low. Tokyo is not very safe. I haven't seen anything about that. It's common for people to emigrate. I also haven't seen anything about that, even though there might be, but I, I'm pretty sure this one is right and I'm just gonna have confidence in myself and I'm gonna move on. The overall aim of this passage is likely, ooh, these questions are good. So whenever you're answering this question, make sure that you don't answer the question based on just one of the paragraphs. It's saying the overall aim of the passage. So you need to take into account everything that's being said in these uh, three paragraphs. What do we think the aim of this passage is? To explain the historical importance of Tokyo. So that's good for this part over here, for the first paragraph. The second paragraph, kind of, yeah, explains some history, but not the third paragraph. To describe the governance structure of Tokyo, yes, in the first paragraph, um, and then maybe the second, and then the half of the second paragraph. To promote to to Tokyo. <laughs> to promote Tokyo as a tourist destination. Towards the end of the third paragraph or the third paragraph itself, I would say does serve that purpose. Is this in focus? Boy, you better be focused. So, promote Tokyo as tourist destination, yeah, maybe. To give an overview of Tokyo, its key attributes and its governance. So this to me, I think might be better because this is more holistic of what the entire three paragraphs are talking about because it talks about the governance, it talks about different parts of Tokyo, and it gives an overview about like uh, tourism and stuff like that. I'm gonna go with this one. I think this is the more this is the most generalized one. All right, let's see what I got. Let's go. Cheeky five out of five. All right, dope. We're doing good. We are doing good. Next question. Next question. Next question. Which of the following phrases is not explicitly used in the passage to describe Journal of the Plague Year? All right. This should be good. Authentic history, imaginative fiction, historic novel, narrative nonfiction. So quickly read through this. Novel is a kind of one man below the great place. Authentic history. So which one is not used? Okay, authentic history. Imaginative fiction. This will be a historic novel. So really cheeky, all right? Very first question. I'm obviously gonna start from the top and scan my way down. And it was literally the last couple of sentences in very cheeky UK fashion. Um, so yeah, make sure you guys do things quickly. Practice quickly skimming, quickly gathering information, and quickly making decisions as well. Decisions that you know are right. Which of the following claims supported by the passage? A journal is not a novel, as is a work of non-fiction. Um, does it say that anywhere? It was initially read as a work of non-fiction, but by the blah, blah, the fictional status was accepted. So this is going to be no. A journal of the plague of the year is based on only one source, the Journal of Henry Foe. Uh, first published an account of one man's experiences. Okay. It's based on only one source, the Journal of Henry Foe, is an account of one man's experiences. So I'm not even going to read the third one. I'm not even going to read the fourth one, even though the third one has a number and it can be quickly deemed true or false. Let me read that quick. Provides more detail than some non-fictional accounts of the Great Plague in 1665. 1665, no account of one man's thing in 1665. Um, I don't see any comparisons to other books written in that time. So I'm just going to go with B. 
which of the following can be inferred from the information in the passage? Defoe published Stone on the Page when he was in his 60s. It was written in the years just prior to the book's publication in 1722. So 1722, and he was five in 1665, so he was born in 1660. So that would make him 4062 when it was published. So he published when he was in his 60s. Yes, that's true. He was 62. All right, next. I don't want to read any of the other ones. Which of the following is not true of the Journal of the Plague of the Year, according to the passage? It's based on a personal account of the events of 1665. Not true. This is true. The detail in the account gives an impression of being accurate and real. Mm, I'd say so. Eyewitness account, events at the time. Yeah, I'd say so. Oh, that says is not true. So that's false. Okay. It considers a variety of perspectives and experiences. No, it's only one man's experience. And we know that because we answered this already in the second question, I think, of this section. It contains journal entries subdivided into four sections, one for each reason. Let me see if I can quickly just rule that out to be sure of my answer. No, 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 no. The book is told chronologically without sections or chapter headings. Ah. The book is told somewhat chronologically, though without sections or chapter headings. And here it says divided into four sections, one for each reason. So this is the false one, which means this might be true. Oh, it does have multiple different experiences, though. Okay, fine. Ooh, almost got that wrong. Okay. Which of the following, according to the passage, is true? Defoe lived in London in 1722. We have no idea. Defoe wrote several historical novels. Um, I don't remember. Defoe only wrote fiction. Also don't remember, Defoe did not publish Journal of the Plague Year under his own name. I mean, he did publish it under the initials. So isn't that kind of his own name? That's cheeky. Are his initials his name? Who knows? All right, I'm gonna go to this one. Let's see how we do. All right, cheeky four out of five. Before I check that, let me just close a blind because everything's going yellow. All right, that should fix this issue. Let's see what we got wrong. Um, Journal of the Plague is based on only one source. Uh, I should have corrected that after I realized this was wrong in question four. My bad. So very often, actually, you'll answer a question that will make you realize for certain that something that you answered previously is either right or wrong because they will be mutually exclusive or contradict each other, which in this case, I definitely should have gone back and changed it. I just got distracted and moved on. Keep that in mind. You can answer one question and know that that's true for certain, which will help you know whether a previous question was true or false. All right, next question. So, Oyama sent Seije Isobi to the United States to spread the teachings of Kyokushin Karate. So, United States to teach karate. That's what I've taken out of this. Um, let's see. Full contract, blah, blah, blah. No, Seije Isobi got sent to Brazil, so this is false. He did not get sent to the United States. Kicks and elbow strikes to the head are allowed in Kyokushin sparring. So, Kyushin is my main elements. There's some sort of three kicks and elbows, kicks and elbows, head and neck. However, kicks to the knee, kicks to the head, knee strikes, punch level running, kicks to the inner are permitted. Okay, so kicks and elbow strikes to the head are allowed. However, kicks to the head are permitted. What about elbow strikes to the head? Hand and elbow strikes to the head are prohibited. So this statement is false. It's saying elbow and kicks are allowed. However, kicks are allowed, but elbow is not. So that makes this the total sum of the statement false. Masutatsu Oyama is still practicing today. Masutatsu Oyama, Oyama. So I guess I don't know if we can say that this specific person, Oyama, is practicing still. We It says it's still practiced in a limited number of dojos, but I don't think we know if this guy specifically is practicing today. We can't tell. There's nothing to say that he is, and there's nothing to say that he isn't. So I'm going to go with can't tell. Sparring is referred to as Kihon. All right, let's try and find that real quick. Kihon, Kihon basics, kata, and kumite. Three main elements, technique, forms, and sparring. These are sometimes referred to as the three Ks. So sparring is kumite, so this is false. All right. Okay, that was a good one. Let's see. All right, nice, nice. Really quick, four out of four. Um, these are the kinds of questions that you really hope to get in your in your exams because you can just quickly go through them, quickly eliminate them. Although it looked like there was a lot of complicated words and f foreign phrases and names and everything like that, if you just ignore all of those outside factors and just focus on the words, quickly skim through the paragraphs to find the information you need, you can answer these questions really, really quickly. 
All right, guys, and I think that is it for me. I'm gonna cut this video here. I have a flight to catch in a couple of hours to Toronto, so I'm gonna need to cut it off here. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you do leave a like on it and subscribe to my channel to see more UCAT and medical school related content from me. I'm definitely gonna be updating you about my time as a researcher and while I'm on holiday this summer in Toronto and then in Greece. So definitely follow me on Instagram and subscribe to my channel if you guys wanna be kept up to date with that. Anyways, guys, it's been an absolute pleasure. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you in the next one. Peace.